Okay, here we have some sodomised graphics cards. These are the ones earlier that failed the test, failed to post for whatever reason. This is the one that looked like it was on LSD when he powered it up, just random colours and artefacts and got over the place. I've just pulled the heat sink off, and that's as I found it. No thermal compound whatsoever. So I'm willing to let this thing cook itself to death, or they removed the thermal compound, knew it was not fixable, threw it back together to sell on eBay, and forgot to put the back piece on. Um, this is another 4890. The other one's a 4890 as well. Maybe these really crossfire together, I don't know. Um, the other one is a very noisy fan, so I doubt it. I think the other one has more hours on it than this thing. Um, but this is a missing connector. I believe it's a, uh, yes, a DVI connector that's missing on this one. Um, it does not work though. However, if you look at the uh, thermal compound, I wonder why it's not working. Um, like, just a possibility that that might be causing that. I don't know. I might get that lucky, wipe that off, and it'll be okay. I've got to find something that dissolves that stuff first. I'm thinking, uh, you know, there are probably people that go nuts now, like carburetor cleaner or something like that, might get that off. Or alcohol. Like, I've tried a bit of alcohol though, and it's not that strong, and it won't actually touch it. So it's going to be carb clutch cleaner or something like that, or even petrol. Neither of which conduct electricity, so it should be pretty good there. They might dissolve the glue that holds the chip together, but oh well. <laughs> um, oh yeah, and this um, VRM here. Look at this, this is uh, interesting. That's just the fact the lens cap just dangles in front of the camera by design. Great, well done lads. Um, this is clearly one of the screws that holds the DVI connector in. Like, one of the standoffs, whatever you call it. And then here is one of the push pins. So there's a push pin, and then there's that. Like, yeah. More than likely it's got a fried VRM as well, but we'll see. Oh, and this is the 7770 over here. Oh, no, sorry. No, it gets better. This one here, these are the screws I pulled out of it, holding the um, cooler on. I don't think there's one that's the same. Sorry, my home camera is completely the wrong place there. But yeah, look, they're all different sizes. Moving on. ATI 7770, the Xbox One's GPU, just in case you weren't aware. Obviously it's uh, put onto a different chip and it's a CPU and GPU in one, like an APU, but more powerful than most APUs you can buy, because it's got a 7770 built in. That's what the Xbox One has. Um, this is a separate graphics card variant of that, so it's quite a lot older, obviously. Um, as you can see, it's missing a screw. None of them are the, well, they are the same, sorry. They're all rounded off as well. It's missing its back piece as well. This also has a ton of damaged capacitors here. There's one missing and the pads for it are missing as well. There's one missing there. Something's missing from there. I don't know what. Looks like another capacitor, possibly a resistor. It's just snapped off. Something, I believe, was there. It's hard to say for sure. No, maybe not. Maybe that wasn't populated. There was definitely something there, though. You can see where it's sheared off. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so those are the three well and truly sodomised ones. The ones that work, that one there, 4870, another 4870 with a much nicer cooler on it, reference design, and uh, this thing, it's a, what is this heat, what is this little thing, 6670, but these um, cards here, no, they're dead, might be fixable, might, <laughs> very might, um, but it might be totally fried, we'll see. Um, one of them's definitely totally fried. This one here, because it artifacts of LS, lights on LSD, it means the GPU is bad. Now, you could hot air gun fix it, and I will do that for demonstrational purposes to see what the performance of this card is like, because it will work for a short time. But it will run for maybe an hour, maybe two hours, maybe a day, maybe a week, maybe a month, and then it will fail, because all you're doing is heating up the metal and making it expand. So you get a temporary reconnection inside the chip. The failure is this piece of silicon and the substrate PCB underneath that fails. It's not the solder balls on the back like everyone seems to think. It's this piece of silicon and the solder between it and the substrate that fails. And you can't really heat that up again to the point where it actually stick because you need flux to reflow solder and you're not properly reflowing it so it will fail again anyway um, in short order. The only thing I have seen that does work as a more permanent fix, but like Apple did, funnily enough, but not a similar sort of thing, that was just a solder joint problem. They put a bit of shoe rubber on top of it to slam it against the case to put pressure on it. 
that actually does work to an extent, but it's a complete bodge, and you should never do that and sell a graphics card like that knowing you've done that. Um, obviously, it's not rubber you put between it, it'd be thermal pad, but yeah, <laughs> let's not go into that too much. I have seen that done though. <laughs> Anyway, that concludes this video on the uh, sodomized graphics cards. Thank you for watching.